Hey guys, welcome back once again. For those of you new here, hello and welcome. My name is Evie and today we are jumping straight back into some Planet Zoo, specifically the Alphabet Zoo. Now, I am building today for the giant otter, which you guys suggested and props to everyone for just for suggesting that one because I actually had a really fun time building this. It was kind of pushing me out of my comfort zone, making me do things a little bit differently that I haven't done before. Like I made an underwater viewing area, which I don't think I've done. And the aquatic pack has been out for a very, very long time now. And I just don't think I've ever used like the actual seating to do a under viewer, under viewing, underwater viewing area with like a talk as well. But before we jump any further into this speed build, I am going to apologize in advance as I did have some problems filming this episode. I know I usually do kind of like a playthrough and a little bit of a speed build in the middle, but... I decided, stupidly decided, before I started filming that I wanted to move my microphone from one side of my desk to the other side of my desk to reduce the background sound from my PC. Now, boy oh boy, was that a silly thing to do. Well, it wasn't because it, it's now working better, but I decided, I don't know why, it didn't even cross my mind to double check that the microphone was working correctly. I think you guys can sense where this is going. So for some reason, the microphone was picking up a really incredibly loud loud that's not a word loud buzzing sound that's what i condensed into one loud buzzing sound to loud um and i just really did not I, I could not fix it i'm sure somebody out there could if they really wanted to but it was just easier for me to cut my losses with this video hence why this video is late i tried i just could not bring myself to work on it i was so annoyed i was so disheartened that it actually kind of fucked up and it was all my fault and I am like, screw it. I will just keep the speed build um, and I will come back next week. Hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes well with the next episode being the usual style. So thank you once again to everybody that did suggest the giant otter for this week's video. Just thank you to everyone that did comment on last week's video. I say last week, it was like three weeks ago now. The last video suggesting the animals. There was so much love for all of them. And I, I say it every week. I really do. But I really did want to build for all of them. So I did throw in the giant Galapagos tortoise in with the capybaras, as I did mention in the comments, if somebody, if anybody had seen that really. Um, and I have gone with the giant otter, which I'm, I don't think I've ever built for before. And I really decided to try and push my luck with it. I'm not going to lie, because building with water on sloped terrain is an absolute nightmare. Why I decided to do a a terrain like an already manipulated map on this game is beyond me next time i think of that somebody slap me because it is an absolute nightmare to try and place water like your habitats can only face a certain direction and it's it can just be a, a lot more effort than it needs to be but i did it and I, I like pushing myself sometimes and having to work around these but boy oh boy it was a a bit of a nightmare now, if I can give you guys one suggestion when it comes to trying to place water in this game is to always recheck that the water is correct when building. Like if you move anything like these barriers, you can go to place the water again and it's like, no, I will not go to the level that you want me to. And it can just be painstaking to try and get correct. So I have made this habitat quite large, which I usually do, but I think this might nearly be too big. I... I'm not going to change it though. I will just let the otters, because I believe they can have a fair view in their habitat, I will just let them breed, fill up the space, similar to the capybaras, and I grew to instantly regret that with the capybaras, because they are still breeding like crazy, and it's actually, it's almost too much. But if you guys enjoy watching rocks being placed, which I, I, it's something that I really enjoy, I really do, I don't know why, I enjoy placing them, I enjoy watching people place them, and it just kind of like all comes together, and I hated that for some reason, can't remember why, but here I go again, just redoing it. But I love placing rocks, it's one of my favourite things, I don't know why, I, I, I probably am not even that good at it, it's just very therapeutic to me to just place the same thing over and over again, slightly rotated to make it all blend into one, I enjoy it. It's nice. And I got to place a shit ton of rocks for this build because I pretty much filled the entire water area on the diving end of the things where you will have like the people sitting and watching it to be fully rocked as I thought that would seem more kind of real for a zoo to have it kind of built. Like this isn't a naturally forming rock. I'm not trying to make this look natural. This is more of like a showing area of the otter. And then it kind of tapers off into more of a natural 
kind of bank where they can come in and out of the water. Now I did build two viewing areas in this habitat. One of them is the underwater viewing area that you see me doing here, which probably took the longest I reckon. And the next is up the back, which I haven't started yet, which is their hard shelter, which I thought the giant otter needed to have like hard shelter and bedding in one. Now I could be wrong in saying this, but that's not what I noticed. Like when I was looking up the bedding for the otter, it actually said that they sleep on the jetty, which is a new piece in the aquatic pack, maybe? I don't know if it's the aquatic pack or a free update, but it's the jetty bedding. And so I had to, I built a jetty. I wasn't planning on it, but I had to because I was like, oh shit, well the otters aren't gonna sleep in the hard shelter that I built them. So I could be wrong in finding that, but they only seem to really use the hard shelter when I, like when it's raining, like that's the only time that they seek it out. Now I have had problems. One problem with placing a lot of rocks is when you play test it with an adult animal, you fix it and you're like, beautiful, they cannot escape. And then as soon as a baby is born, the baby just sniffs out the weakest part in your barrier and just escapes. So of course I had some escapage, but it's to be given. It's just, it, it's always going to happen. And I refuse to play test as soon as a baby's born. I like the surprise of getting the notification saying a baby animal has just appeared somewhere random. Hence that ostrich that appeared in the capybara food court. Love it. Not going to change it. But here you can see I'm starting on the uh, second viewing area, which is their hard shelter, which I was trying to make the bedding. Um, but I decided I needed to get the giant otter in first. I think I got six in first, maybe four, and just let them do what they needed to do and fill up the space so I could see how much coverage, the terrain, how much hard shelter and all that jazz. And oh, I'm not going to lie. I love, in my mind, I was thinking that the otters were going to be tropical. Like they were going to be nice, dense jungle kind of river bush. That's not correct. They like sand and they like palm trees and it threw me, okay? In my head, I had already planned out this style of build and I was like, beautiful, dense, uh, like tropical, riverish, kind of even temperate. No, blatantly wrong. It is sand and it is palm trees and I I haven't really built deserty before. So I was kind of thrown <laughs> a little bit out of my comfort zone, which I do like. And I feel like it comes together quite nice in the end, but it's just not how I expected this build to go to begin with. I will of course put in some footage at the end of this video of just the otters playing and kind of a little bit of a view of the habitat. Cause I feel like you don't get a nice immersive feel when you're just watching it getting built in front of you. So I will do something a little bit different than my usual videos and end with some kind of scenic shots of the otters using their habitat. I have got no idea how much this habitat cost, but each one of these rocks is what, 10 to $20 or whatever. And I would actually like to know how many rocks I did place. Cause I feel like it'd have to be close to a thousand. It's just so many. I really, I just, I think I've got a problem. I, I like, I like placing rocks too much. And is that a problem? I don't know. But to me, it kind of seems like it because I actually don't think I could make a single build that didn't have a, like any rocks in it. Like maybe that's the next challenge I should try and do is a rockless build. I actually think I would go insane. I, the thought of that like makes my anxiety spike, not placing rocks in a habitat. Can't do it, won't do it, impossible. Now I did try it and in the gameplay footage that I do have of this build, I did try and put some talks and educators in to kind of draw people there and it did really work. I really did enjoy it. I've got to try and time it correctly with the year and how far they have to walk and whatnot, but it did draw in quite a large crowd, which I'm pretty happy with. I do want to make the underwater viewing area kind of semi-enclosed and sheltered, but I didn't do that in this build. I was really mainly focused on the habitat and not the outside of their kind of amenities that go with the habitat per se. And now, like I filmed this probably three weeks ago, I reckon, and I just could not bring myself to deal with it because it was stressing me out the fact that it wasn't my usual format. But I haven't played the game since, so I haven't done any extra additional work to the outside of any habitats or any kind of addition to anything whatsoever. Now, to those of you who did 
suggest in my last video that I name some animals. I did get through and name a doll willow. I believe that is what I needed to call it. And the baby formus and black bear is Maggie. So if you do have any suggestions for names of any animals that you would like to see in this zoo, whether it be the otters, whether it be some of the adult formus and black bears, any of the capybaras, I can't promise that they'll stay in the zoo long, but you are more than welcome to throw your name or a name suggestion out there for those. And I can get through and add you into the zoo or if you want to be a keeper by all means and that being said I did see the uh update the new update coming out though is it 1.14 1.14 I I'm not 100 sure which was announced just before they announced the new arid pack which I'm kind of here for I feel like we haven't had an animal pack in a fair while and as much as I love scenery and building pieces being able to add more animals into a theme that already kind of exists is great. I love it. Like, I really do like it. Sure, we've already got a camel and the, you can always look at the downside of these things. But to me, it's eight new animals that we get to play with. And to me, that's pretty exciting. Oh, man, I just... I'm sorry, I'm watching myself speed build here and getting distracted by placing of trees. Again, as I said, the tropical like desert tropical kind of vibe is something that I've never really built for before. So I wanted to have it as that, not like full, full oasis style tropical build. I, I don't know. It's hard to describe the vibe I was going for with this habitat and the kind of theme. Cause it's got a mixed bag of like palms and then more of like dense kind of tropical trees, which the otters loved. They're more than happy to have those in the habitat, which is great. But I kind of found it hard to make them all cohesive and make them kind of go together. So I do end up putting a lot of kind of smaller brush bush kind of plants around with rocks and dents up the entire habitat a little bit. And I think it comes together all right. Now watch me have an absolute nightmare trying to place all of these aquatic rocks together to make a nice enclosed area for the hard shelter for the guests to view the hard shelter of the otters. That was an absolute mouthful to say. Now I'm trying to think of what things actually happened in this playthrough that I might need to update you on. I think the lynx had another baby. I think I can see the notification on the screen right there, which is very exciting. Very happy for that. As we did trade the other girl out of the zoo the other day, as she had grown into an adult and they are just a sim single mating pair. They don't like to have a large amount of them in an enclosure, which is completely fine with me. As well as the Galapagos giant tortoise had some bambinos as well. And it was an absolute ordeal. When I tell you that they are very slow creatures, I think this one was at, like at this point was actually glitched. It just did not work correctly. I, I couldn't handle it. I think I watched it for a solid 15 in real life minutes, like IRL, 15 minutes watching this tortoise go to bed get up slowly, walk to the food, all while offspring imminent. I think it took six, like six months in game for this tortoise to give birth. Uh, it was comical at this point. I kept, like, I watched it for a solid five minutes and I was like, okay, I cannot watch this any longer. We're just going to cut our losses with missing the baby birth. I've got other stuff to be doing. And I did the stuff and I was like, okay, let's go check on the baby tortoise. Still not there. Still had not been born. At this point, I think the tortoise was laughing at me. I was like, I, I cannot handle this. Two lots of capybaras gave birth after the fact that the tortoise was in labor. It was, it was seriously too much to handle. And I wish you guys could have seen it. And I wish my microphone had not fucked up because it was actually quite funny and just a lot, a lot going on. Now I tried to create the nice bedding space up here for them. I... I'm trying to push myself out of the comfort zone to make things not look too perfect. I find that that is hard for me with rocks is that I want everything to almost be symmetrical and even and perfect. And I'm like, no, it doesn't need to be perfect. You're allowed to have this one rock sticking out. It makes it look more natural, but it is something that I still struggle with trying to make things look natural and not too man-made and but perfect at the same time. It's a, a vicious cycle that I'm just no good at. And this is where I realized that the otters actually don't, have bedding. Like when you click on otter and select bedding, nothing comes up except this jetty. So I was like, okay, well, that's not what I was expecting I was going to have to do. So now let's throw a jetty into this, which 
I like. I actually really do like it. I hadn't planned on putting a jetty in, but I think it really kind of adds to the enclosure. And I feel like I wouldn't mind doing some more kind of man-made structures in some of my enclosures and habitats after this, as I find it's kind of fun. It makes it more of like a little scene and not just like a kind of man-made habitat. I mean, this is a man-made habitat. I get that. I'm not that silly. But it doesn't make it seem as kind of natural. It gives it more of like a fun kind of feel to it. Personally, that's what I think. Now, I wanted to put some of their enrichment in, but again, this is a very sloped terrain. I think you guys can hear the pain in my voice when I say sloped terrain every single time because it has really made me work for it. Like, the sloped terrain really just said, you better work, bitch, because I... I was having a nightmare. I really was. Now, I'm still not sure about this jet, like pontoon jetty style thing that I just placed. I don't know if you have to be able to access it from all four sides or what. I haven't really seen anyone on it. And I know that that is a complaint that a lot of people have with this game, that that item itself doesn't work very much. So I was kind of just testing it out for myself, but I have not seen them use it just yet either. And another thing was trying to place any enrichment or food or water or anything in this sloped habitat. Like, I don't know why I chose to do the aquatic animal in this sloped area. I, somebody should have like been like, Evie, that was the stupidest choice and talked me out of it. But no, I stuck with it. I think this probably took me three hours or so to get correct. And it, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Don't let me do it again. Next time I go to build on a sloped map, literally stop me, pull me aside slap me around a little bit and say, don't do it to yourself. I am going to apologize again for the delay in this video. It was a mix of me not wanting to touch it because of the screw up that I did with the recording of it. And also I live on a hobby farm and we have pigs and the pigs are pregnant and one of them gave birth the other night and it was incredibly stressful this was the first birth that we had had on our farm and it was pretty much a textbook birth of like everything that could go wrong did go wrong so we are now um look mama pig is fine and we have three baby pigs and we are hand feeding them and they are living with us pretty much in the laundry and i don't know if you've ever seen a baby pig but they are very demanding they needing to be fed every two hours, pretty much, um, on the dot. So I am feeding them two hours every day. Speaking of, I think in about 10 minutes time, I'm going to hear piglets squealing for me. I am now their mother. I will insert a little picture of them on the screen as well for you guys to see, because they are really, really cute. So we are just taking it slow. We, we are learning as we are doing this. So we're not really sure kind of what we are doing. We are uh, doing as much research and informing ourselves as much as we can. But again, we are just learning as we do it. And they are so cute. But again, they are literally like a newborn child. And I'm feeding them up until midnight, pretty much. And then I'm going to sleep and they're actually okay. They seem to be okay for four to six hours after that. They don't seem to be too hungry, too aggressive. They might be in a nice sleep cycle. But then my partner gets up anywhere from like four till six o'clock, four to six o'clock and we'll feed them from there. So we have a little bit going on on our plate at the moment and we fully accept that we wanted this, but it is just a busy time for me. So videos might be a little bit more sporadic than usually the weekly uploads that I was having, but do know that I am still enjoying this and I do want to create for it. I've just got a bit going on. So as I was finishing this habitat, back on topic of the otters, of course, no more pig talk, uh, I realized that their coverage was not even like close to being full. So I decided I was going to go ham. I said, I'm going to put as much as I can in here. Like it's only at 51% and they can have full coverage. Like you have to have like minimum 30% by the looks of that. And I must have only just had it. So they want as much kind of dense trees, bush, shrubs as at all. So I had to get creative with not just putting palms in there. I had to have the, um, I can't even remember what those trees are called. The big ones. Like the, I've got two big ones in there and they are helping with the coverage. I also decided to put the rhubarb plants in because I really love that giant look to them. They, they're comically large. I don't know if like wild rhubarb gets this big or not, but I have seen homegrown rhubarb that gets maybe like the leaves might get almost like, 
a foot by two foot long at like absolute most. But we have hit the end of the speed build now. I don't know how I have just rambled on for 20 minutes, but I have. So I'm going to leave you in some silence with just some game sounds and a little bit of footage from the actual habitat. So please enjoy the otters. But please don't forget to leave your suggestions for next week's video. I'm going to say next week's. Who knows when it'll be up, but it will be coming for the H animal, the old her. So for those two options, we have the Himalayan brown bear and the hippopotamus. So please leave your suggestions for which one of those two animals you'd like to see in the next video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.